An adventure 65 million years in the making. Actually, this Ford Explorer was built in 1992, and the movie Jurassic Park came out in 93, so an adventure 28 years in the making. This is EXP-04, one of the many safari tour ride vehicles from Jurassic Park that would have carried tourists around the park. On the stormy night of June 11, 1993, EXP-04 and 05 were stranded outside the T-Rex exhibit. Soon after, the dinosaur breaks free from its enclosure, goes on a rampage, and destroys EXP-04. It gets crushed under the weight of the angry beast and eventually pushed off a cliff. Looks like it's in pretty good shape for being destroyed by a T-Rex, doesn't it? No, this is not one of the actual movie vehicles from Steven Spielberg's first Jurassic Park film. This is a Jurassic Park EXP-04 tour vehicle replica. The owner was gracious enough to let me borrow this incredibly rad vehicle for the day. He calls the explorer Timmy, named after the character Tim Murphy from the first film. This replica started out its life as a 1992 Ford Explorer, Eddie Bauer edition. Fancy! A complete wrap in the Jurassic Park tour vehicle livery. The original wheels were plastic dipped yellow. There's lights up front and on the roof. Got the taillight guards. It's got the exact same brush guard as seen on the movie cars, which many years later is incredibly difficult to find. Now, if being a Jurassic Park tour vehicle replica weren't enough, the other special part about this 92 Ford Explorer is that it only has 70,000 miles and it's in near perfect condition. The owner, Ryan, bought this low-mile, pristine Explorer in 2015 from the original owner who had it since new. The goal had always been to create a Jurassic Park vehicle. In fact, Ryan told me that he bought these taillight guards before he even bought the Explorer because they're so hard to find. He knew that he wanted to make a Jurassic Park vehicle before he even owned the Explorer. But it seemed wrong to rip apart such an immaculate vehicle, even if it was just an Explorer. You have to remember, even though they built tons of Explorers, these were utilitarian vehicles, and many were unceremoniously junked when they reached the end of their serviceable lives. Countless more were victims of the Cash for Clunkers program. The Explorer was the number one vehicle turned in for that program, many of them perfectly acceptable running and driving vehicles, all sent to the crusher. So when you come across a low-mile first-generation Explorer, it really is something special, and the owner couldn't bring himself to cutting up one of maybe the nicest first-gens left in existence. So he decided to make it look as much like a Jurassic Park Explorer as he could without cutting it up, and to make sure all of the modifications were reversible, which is commendable. I'm a big fan of utilitarian vehicles that many might not consider collectible. With fewer and fewer first-gen Explorers on the road each year, I'm glad he kept it as original as possible while still fulfilling a dream to have a vehicle from Jurassic Park. To Jurassic Park movie fanatics, it's likely obvious that this Explorer is not entirely screen accurate. Where's the bubble roof? Jurassic Park Explorers are supposed to have a bubble roof. Aside from not wanting to cut a massive hole in the roof and ruin such a pristine Explorer, there are several practical reasons for skipping the bubble roof. Most people that see the vehicle don't even notice the lack of a bubble roof or don't care and still think it's a movie car. In fact, these guys that just came up to me a few minutes ago totally thought it was a movie car. And cutting that giant hole for that bubble roof would also remove what little structural rigidity this old Explorer even had in the first place and would turn the entire vehicle into a rolling greenhouse. Better bring your sunscreen. When it comes down to it, the purpose of this vehicle is not to completely replicate every last detail from the movie. It's all about fun and bringing smiles to people's faces. This Explorer has been to countless events, Christmas parades, Comic Cons, Jurassic World movie events, Radwood, and even without every last screen accurate detail, it always demands attention and it always brightens people's day. Okay, enough talking, let's drive this thing. Once inside, it's pretty obvious that the goal for this cabin was not about looking exactly like a movie car. In fact, there isn't much in here that looks like it's from the movie at all. 
the goal here was about preserving this flawless interior. It's so uncommon to see a first generation Explorer in such nice condition. Unearthing this vehicle must have been like finding a complete brontosaurus skeleton. Rediscovering a beast that once roamed the earth in droves, and now they're completely gone. So we don't have all the accoutrements from the film, no special dashboard, no interactive CD-ROM display, no custom seats. We actually do have some night vision goggles. Well, they're not actual night vision goggles, they're uh, replicas, but they look pretty cool. The thing that makes this cabin so special is simply getting to experience a first-gen Explorer in nearly new condition and getting to experience something that was once so ubiquitous and now is almost completely forgotten. So let's take a look at some of the details of this first-gen Explorer cabin. The first thing that you'll notice is the two-spoke kind of frowny steering wheel. I have a Ford Probe, so I'm familiar with steering wheels that kind of look like they're frowning. This one right here doesn't look very happy, but Ford was a big fan of them back in the 90s. And this top-of-the-line Eddie Bauer edition is completely loaded. You've got cruise control, power windows, power locks, leather seats with a ton of adjustments. Check out these seat bolsters here. they have got a little pump in them that fills them with air. That is pretty rad. Now this is kind of a weird little idiosyncrasy. You look in front of you and you see these vents. You've got this vent right here in front of the driver. And to the left of that, it looks like there's another vent, but that's actually just decorative. I'm not sure why they didn't just put two vents right here. That's kind of weird. And down here, you got really simple controls for the HVAC system and a note to let you know exactly how to shut off the airflow completely in case you couldn't figure it out. I always think that's kind of weird when you have a design where you need a sticker to instruct people how to use it, but apparently Ford didn't think anybody would be able to figure this out. So if you can't figure out how to turn off the air, read the instructions right there. And check this out, double visors all the way. That is such a great feature. New cars need to have this. Two visors, that is such a good idea. Down here you get one whole cup holder. If your passenger has a drink, sorry, hold it in between your legs. Got a nice little storage area right down here where you can keep your coins. I always thought that was a cool 80s, 90s feature. Got this armrest and underneath that you got a storage area. And check this out, the owner has the original window sticker. This is awesome. The Explorer was first introduced in 1990 as a 1991 model, replacing the Bronco II. The Explorer still offered off-road capability, but was much more family-oriented, with the available five-door version, a quieter cabin, and a wider body that allowed for three seats in the back instead of two. Cargo space was also optimized, putting the spare tire under the floor instead of on a swing arm like the Bronco II. Driving a first-gen Explorer kind of takes you back to the Jurassic era of SUVs. This vehicle clearly wears its truck-based roots on its sleeve. If you're used to modern SUVs and crossovers, this will give you a little bit of a history lesson in terms of how much more refined SUVs have become. But take yourself back to 1992. This was much more refined than the trucks that came before it. This was a lot more car-like than the Bronco II. This was a lot more car-like than the full-size Bronco. So with the five-door option, you could see how this thing would have appealed to families over something like a Bronco II. And if there's any vehicle that we can thank or blame for the explosion of SUVs in the 1990s all the way up until today, it's the Ford Explorer. They were immensely popular. They sold a ton of these things, and this formula that Ford succeeded with forged a path for numerous SUVs to follow. It was the beginning of an era, and for better or for worse, we've never looked back. The lone engine for 1992 was a four liter V6 making 155 horsepower. And yes, by today's standards, this vehicle doesn't feel all that quick. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot going on underneath the hood. But back in 92, this was more than acceptable. And I suppose it's better than the electric motors that were used in this vehicle in Jurassic Park, which limited the Explorer's top speed to something like 12 miles an hour. Not even fast enough to outrun your grandpa, let alone an angry carnivorous dinosaur. 
Back in 1992, the standard transmission was a five-speed manual. This fancy Eddie Bauer version has the optional four-speed automatic. And push-button four-wheel drive was an option. Speaking of Eddie Bauer, Ford partnered up with that outdoor apparel brand for this top-tier Explorer. Does anybody wear Eddie Bauer clothes anymore? It feels like a totally 1990s brand. I could totally see the original owner of this Explorer back in 92 wearing a fancy Eddie Bauer jacket, listening to Stone Temple Pilots in his cassette player, and drinking an ice-cold bottle of Clearly Canadian. All right, let's take a quick break from driving this fantastic machine and head down to the Los Angeles Natural History Museum and see some actual real dinosaurs. Such a fun experience to drive this car and unexpectedly got to appreciate it from two completely different perspectives. First, just amazing to drive a 29 year old Ford Explorer that was kept in such fantastic condition, but also such a blast to pilot a vehicle that brings back such great memories of the movie, gives me a warm and fuzzy sense of nostalgia and allows me to constantly see smiling faces, thumbs up and waves. It no doubt brings a lot of people back to their childhood, back to the first time they saw the now iconic film. And it's cool to be part of that. Movie car replicas are a funny thing. Some owners nail down every last single detail, laboring over such details as the color of bolts, getting enjoyment out of making their vehicles as screen accurate as possible. And I love those replicas, but this one right here is incredibly unique in its own right to take a pristine, low-mile Explorer and have some fun with it. That's the point, right? Owning a movie car is all about having fun and enjoying the smiles that they will no doubt generate. What a fantastic experience. I've enjoyed every single minute of this day. Thanks so much to Ryan for letting me film with Timmy for a day. not gonna give this thing back. Sorry, Ryan, I'm, I'm gonna keep this. You can come visit, but yeah, this is mine now. Sorry. If you enjoy this video and you wanna see more like it, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you can get notified of all my new and used car features and updates on my fleet of weird, terrible, and mostly broken 80s and 90s vehicles. Do you have a vehicle that you'd like me to film? Let me know. Send me an email with a year, make, model, and your location. If you want to help support the show, please consider buying a t-shirt at helloroad.tv slash shop, or you can become a patron at patreon.com slash helloroad. For as little as $2 a month, you can get early access to my videos and more. Hope all is well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. You know, Explore is a little like having a platinum selling record. Since its introduction three years ago, it continues to be a tremendous... Explorer XLT with PEP 941.